Um, can I get everyone who's got a mobile device or a laptop to go to the website menti.com? We might have a little bit of interactivity um, uh, this afternoon. And then when you're there on that site, type in the numbers 614230. Um, and there's a question that will appear on your screens, be it a mobile or a laptop. Just a kind of focuser this afternoon. Menti.com. Oh, and this is the live poll results coming up. So uh, just trying to gauge where we are as an audience. We're a bit sleepy after lunch. It was a delicious lunch. Oh, wait. Fired up, ready to go. It's slowly coming from behind. <laughs> oh, sleepy days. <laughs> Oh, I could watch it all day. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, 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 it's great to have everyone here. It's great to talk to you today. Um, in the, you answered your screens. You'll see a, a question on the answer page which says, ask a question. If at any time you have a question that occurs to you, um, you don't have to shout out. And you, I often find I have a question about five minutes into a presentation and 25 minutes later, I can't remember it. So um, you can just type it in to that thing, and at the end of the presentation, we'll go through the questions as they as the, as the submitted them. So feel free to ask as many questions as you like as we go along, and they won't be forgotten. Um, thank you very much, <laughs> and we'll see you at that at the end. Okay. So I am David Balfour from the Australian Film Television Radio School. Um, I'm the head of teaching and learning. Um, I'm Julia Avenal, and I'm the e-learning consultant at the school also. So we are here to tell you to talk to you about our school um, and our unique use of Moodle, which is an evolved use over the last four years, um, which allows us to support the creative education of industry-focused um, courses. We teach film, television, and radio. It's kind of in the title. Uh, and we are a unique school in many ways. Um, our purpose is to find, support, and develop the next generation of Australian storytellers in screen and broadcast. Uh, and we are a national agency. We are in the Department of Communications, but we are also um, a self-accredited higher education provider through Texas. So we are, uh, award our own degrees. Uh, and so we are kind of sit in this world uh, uh, between government and education. And uh, we, of course, we have lots of compliance to do because of that. But I want to tell us a little bit about the school, and because uh, we're filmmakers, I think I do it in the form of a video. I think above all, we do need a real elite of producers, of directors, of skip script writers, of people who can show how this can be done. And the best way that I know to do this is to set up a proper film and television school. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, a very great pleasure to uh, come to this gathering, uh, to this school, to declare it open. But there is no question that for the rest of the lives of us all, Australia will be able to uh, participate. Australians will be able to contribute better because of this school. That's an O-week activity. Film school is a mixture of dreams and nightmares, and even the nightmares you look back on and you think, oh, how awesome, because you learned so much. I've always felt it was one of those lucky things in life. The privilege is so unique in the world, I can't tell you how lucky we are to have it. So without the film school, I wouldn't be here. I have a career only because of the film school. That's been excellent.
So that's a, that's a bit of our history. We were set up um, in 1973 because the 10 previous years saw no Australian film production, not a single film. And the government believed at that time that it was important that Australians have a voice on their own in their cinemas. And this school, along with a number of other initiatives, saw the creation of a whole generation of filmmakers, which has been, you've seen some of the graduates there afterwards. Um, and so our role in finding, developing, and supporting film students is to help create and sustain an industry. So we are deeply embedded in an industry. Our students, oops, our students come from all states and territories of Australia, and sometimes New Zealand, um, and they come from diverse backgrounds. They are not all high school leavers or, or, or graduate students. They often come having left school at the age of 16 or never gone to university. So our education to help these support these students has to be accommodating to a variety of educational experiences. Um, and they all share a passion to tell the Australian stories that have motivated and moved their lives. Um, we, at the, and that passion is part of the merit selection process. Um, and we'll get on to more a bit about this in a minute. But um, our philosophy of teaching is that we deliver industry-relevant education through an experiential learning model. And we approach our craft through a conceptual approach. We believe that concepts are the key way to develop students of the future. And I'll say more about that in a minute. A pillar of our education is collaborative practice, where students have to work in complex situations to have to create um, powerful pieces of work, be it in radio or in film, and that reflection is the driver of the transformation in the students across their education experience. Um, this is our conceptual model. We don't teach directing straight up. We don't teach screenwriting straight up. We teach character and performance and story. These are the skills. If we teach a student how to use this computer or that camera back there, um, in five years' time, those skills will be redundant as that camera is redundant, as technology has overtaken it. So we teach the concepts around these technologies that inform our storytelling. And that is our approach to education, and that's how we have driven our Moodle site. Um, our, our experiential learning model, as all experiential models, starts with action. From day one, students are doing things in a highly structured environment that over time becomes more and more uh, student-enabled. Uh, um, after doing action, they reflect, and then they do abstract conceptualization in partnership with their mentors, uh, and then they do planning and further research to do more action again. And I'll p tell you how this works. This is one semester. This is the first semester of the BA program. It's a 16-week semester, and it's intensive. Unfortunately, we don't have any part-time option, and students experience our course as one single entity. You'll see that in one week they do screen business, and the next they do story. In each week, there's a cycle of uh, a complete learning cycle. They do something, or reflect on it, they get more resources, they do it again. And that happens over the first 12 weeks, leading up to, in the last four weeks, a large, complex production. So uh, over the course of a whole semester, students make lots of different work. Um, and students experience our course as one course. Though, like your schools and your, your universities, perhaps, they do individual subjects. So we have a kind of a challenge. They experience the course as one whole, but we are required, because we're a self-recording organization, to do subjects and to and have a whole series of structures around that. So that's one of our challenges. And um, Julie's going to take us through some of our solutions to these challenges. Thanks, David. So um, to match this unique design of our courses with the needs of our students, we are using basic Moodle tools and themes, but we're deliberately pushing them to improve the online experience for the students within our limited resources. Um, we have made our solution is to set up the courses as courses as one. We are using the collapsed topic format and each section of weekly content is released the week before the class unless it's required earlier. The students consume resources at their own pace and we have completion tracking turned off to prevent any confusion. So um, what this uh, screenshot here is showing you a example of our BA year one page in semester one and um, the architecture of, uh, we've used Boost theme here, 
and um, we have a series of icons down the bottom that link to key navigation um, areas for the student. So um, they link to things like the semester outline, the uh, Office 365 accounts, their online timetabling system, um, and their assessments. So some of these links are going externally um, to other systems, and some of them are linking directly to Moodle objects within the course page itself. Um, where we are linking to Moodle objects within the course page, um, we keep these um, in a hidden content section, which we have at the bottom of the course page. And um, you can see here the number of items that we have um, in the average section. So these objects are all hidden using stealth mode. The setup of this section, and in fact, actually, the whole architecture of the course page itself, um, is set up by the education staff and by the um, support staff. This leaves the teaching staff free to just focus on the teaching content. It also ensures that everything is set up in a particular way and a standard way, so the student gets a consistent experience throughout the courses. Um, so this next slide is um, just a, another overview of that course page and you can see here all the different collapsed topics um, that we have. So at the top we have a general, you can't see it very well, but there's a general resources section at the top, um, some information about orientation, and then we move into a series of sections that correspond directly to the weekly delivery pattern in the order of the subjects. The teaching staff are coming in and they're populating their section uh, ahead of time with any resources, but we don't actually release the content to the students until the week before. Then after the lectures or workshops, the teachers will come back and they'll be able to, again, keep populating those areas um, with anything that came out of the lectures, such as the audio recordings or the lecture notes or any handouts or any maybe even any clips that were mentioned during the workshop. Um, so. This uh, screenshot is a, a, uh, an example of one of the weeks uh, open and um, you can see that uh, some of the teachers have started to use labels to help signpost the student about how the content is divided up. Um, that comes in handy when we do have weeks that are very much uh, content focused rather than production focused. Um, so you can see that our design is very, very simple. The advantage of the design um, is that we have a lot of staff coming into this as it's a course of, as one. Um, many of those staff are transient. They may only be with us for a few lectures, maybe, maybe a whole semester, and they all have varying levels of Moodle experience. They're also time poor. So having this simple design means that all the teachers can come in, they know exactly where to put their materials, and also the students know where to find their materials when it comes time to um, retrieve them. So this is an um, example of um, the attendance. We're taking attendance directly into Moodle using the inbuilt tool. Um, all the sessions are set up in advance and we use groups to help the teachers filter uh, their workshops accordingly. Um, the attendance tool is always visible to the students. Uh, we encourage them to monitor it. Um, and we are also monitoring it and every few weeks we run a re the inbuilt report to see how they're travelling and we will contact them if they um, seem to be at risk. Um, that all takes up a lot of time. You can see the sort of reports that we have to go through um, on a regular basis, um, you know, with 100 students or more. And um, the, we do really think it's important though, because of this unique design that we have in our um, pattern of delivery, if a student misses a workshop, um, if they start struggling in a subject, um, there's no opportunity for them to go back and repeat that workshop or in fact repeat that subject. Uh, the grade book. Uh, this uh, example, I'm gonna show you a few ex examples now actually. So this first one shows you an overview of the grade book and this is actually only, um, you know, six assignments or something from, from, a whole, from a whole year of subjects, a whole year of assignments. Um, the, the workflow around our grading process is actually quite structured. Um, the teaching staff mark directly into Moodle. We set up the rubrics in advance um, and then they'll provide some feedback in the feedback comments or they'll upload a feedback sheet. And then we have a grade review panel. At the grade review panel we usually have the head teacher, the course leader and someone from the education team 
and then only the course leader can release the marks. So we never have marks accidentally going out um, from any of the tutors. Um, and that sort of happens pending any decisions that come out of the panel meeting. Um, we always have grading workflow turned on to help manage this process. It needs to be pretty locked down because of the number of lecturers that we have um, in the system at any one time. So this is showing you just a small snap snapshot of how uh, some of the subjects are set up and how we weight them. Um, but in fact, um, it could be up to six, six times this size. And this is just a little snapshot as well of the grade book and, and the, the view that the students will see when they come in to look at their grades. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview about how we set up Moodle um, for our blended courses at Afters. And David will now talk about how we're using learning plans and a strategic audio-visual um, strategy to further develop creative practice online. That's right. So um, thank you, Juliet. A lot of what you've seen is supporting around the action and further skills stages of, of the learning cycle. Um, the two other ones that I want to talk about in, is reflection and collaboration. It, reflection um, is a process that happens naturally, but we, form it, we, we help students formulate their reflection through learning contracts and learning plans. In the master's program, we have a standard template that students set out their particular career and personal goals at the beginning of the course. And over the course of the three or two years, they meet with mentors and they break down these larger goals into more discrete activities that they're set by their mentor. And uh, this is an example here. Um, and attached to this will be a series of things that the student did or student feedback from the lecturer um, on their process. And the idea is that they enable the student to take charge of their own learning. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to gain out of this. And this is my dialogue with these experts. One thing we didn't mention is that our lectures are not traditional lecturers. We work with people who work in industry currently. Most of our teaching staff are current practitioners. And so we're bringing people in constantly to give live, real, industry-relevant feedback to students. And that's where this comes in useful because they're getting goals set by practitioners. Uh, and so this is a part of our reflective journey. Um, and what's great about it, at the end of the two years, the students can look back and see how their learning plans have changed. This wiki page, it's a simple wiki tool, has the ability to see the history. And you can go back and you can check, well, two years ago I said I was really interested in being a screenwriter. Now I'm, a, now I'm actually learning I'm a director. Uh, I want to make things in a different way. And these are powerful tools that they can have complex, reflective conversations with their mentors. Um, being the film and television and radio school, we do like to use audiovisual material. Um, and we've had to evolve a strategic view of how to use this because when I first came here a number of years ago, we were spending three weeks on a single video. We were taking all of our professional practice skills and really making some amazing 10-minute videos. But three weeks for 10 minutes is a tr terrible waste of time. And, and also, it actually is more about the student as audience as opposed to student as active participant in their learning. So we've done a lot of work over the last three years of changing how we think about video and changing how to use video in the, in the classroom. And actually, that's a given our particular lecturers a real challenge. So our strategic view involved using source material, uh, embedding Canopy and LinkedIn um, and Linda and ClickView materials, um, uploading and making accessible all of our lectures. Um, our students are not natural, many of them are not natural readers in the same way that they are, would be at an undergraduate degree. They're people who are like the audiovisual, so providing the materials in that format is actually incredibly important for our students. Um, but then we developed uh, what I call a lo-fi and a hi-fi video strategy. The lo-fi is quick updates in the lecture. I've got my iPhone, I will speak to it, and I'll talk to you directly or I'll talk to the cohort after an experience. Um, and it's useful to give direct formative feedback or kind of general status updates. And these things can be thrown away at the end of each semester or used again, it depends. And then, of course, we also have occasionally highly produced fixed assets that are reused on an ongoing basis. And we collectively work as a team across a course level, what's the right asset that we want to create? Um, so I'll give you a quick snapshot of one of them. So what happens if you get invited to a meeting and you're expected to bring with you some story ideas? 
Well, I can tell you this, you will not be going empty handed. So today in this lecture, I'm going to give you some clues, hints and hot tips on how to invent stories, shortcuts to getting those story ideas. Yep, I'm going to teach you how to cheat. It's very rare. So that's Holly Lyon. She's a screenwriting lecturer. Uh, she teaches story, actually. Uh, and she's a screenwriter, worked on Home and Away in many productions around Australia. Um, and she is not a natural um, presenter, but she is taking to using her phone in a really powerful way to give quick updates to her class. And what we found is, and I'm sure many, and many of you found the same, is that that highly informal, personalized, direct conversation drives better engagement than beautifully produced assets. It's really fascinating. Um, oh, that's not what I want to do. Um, so we have, uh, so that's our solutions to our problems, but we haven't touched on a number of challenges that still uh, persist for us. So Julie's going to wrap up and talk about those. Okay, so I'll just um, go through these um, very quickly. Um, hopefully you can all come up to us in the foyer afterwards if you have um, any great ideas about how we can um, in improve on our practice. So these are the three main areas that, we, um, that we're looking for um, help with at the moment. One of the challenges with having a course as one is that we end up with extremely large grade books. And this can be really scary for some of our, um, our teachers. As we mentioned before, they're industry practitioners, they're not teachers. Um, we also have a lot of transient staff and lots of staff are coming into the grade books at any one time um, to manage them. Um, we, because Moodle thinks everybody's doing the same course, we need to have the notifications turned on about late assignments, but actually everybody's getting the late notifications. And again, some of the practitioners find that overwhelming. So just managing the whole workflow process around that and also um, managing the gradebook itself. The other really big challenge for us, and actually probably the biggest challenge, is finding the right collaborative tools. Um, as David mentioned earlier, collaboration is the key thing that we really um, is really important to our students and um, Moodle doesn't at the moment have the right enhanced tools for us to use and I'm looking forward to, I think um, TAFE New South Wales are going to speak in a minute um, about the workshop tool and I can't wait to hear what they're doing with that. Um, but also uh, we have a number of assignments um, that require the students to work collaboratively literally on documents um, and at the moment we're doing a lot of workarounds with Office 365 and Google Docs and um, non-graded assessments. And of course um, the last struggle for us and I'm sure many of you have the same problem is managing the sheer amount of um, content on your course page um, and avoiding the scroll of death. Um, we, the collapsed topics and the use of labels does go some way to help us uh, wrangle that content a little bit but by the end of the semester, it, it can get out of hand and we're always looking for ways that we can help the lecturers understand um, and get their materials into smaller packages so that we can get them online for the students. Um, oh, sorry, we almost at the end? Okay, that's exactly what yep. I was going to do. So I was gonna, before I have any questions, I want to say thank you to the Moodle community. Julie and I have been coming to Moodle for a number of years, and many of the things that we've seen in today's presentation have evolved out of conversations and presentations in the past. So we hope we've stimulated you and your sites, um, but does anyone have any questions? And the,